Welcome back. This is part six of this how to make future base tutorial course. I'm Echo Sowers, and we are moving right along here through this course. Now I need to get a scratch track going so I can send to the vocalist because I want to make sure that Luna can sing to this track in this key and it's going to work. So we're going to put together the next two parts of this video. We're going to put together a scratch chord progression, which we're going to do in this video. And then next video, we're going to do some just basic drums. And then we're going to send it off to Luna, and she's going to scratch track to it. And then once I get the scratch track, that's how I'll actually create the main mix that will then track the finished vocals to. And we're going to look at the whole process in the studio as well. So let's get going. So I have this piano track loaded up that we were messing with before. So that's the chord progression that I wanted to use. And I have a click set up. It's at 120 beats per minute. So the chord progression is cool, it just does not sound future bassy at all. So the first chord is this E minor, and I want to turn this into a seventh chord, minor seventh chord. So I'm going to put this uh, D on top of it. Right, now that D right there, that would make this a minor seventh chord, but I think I can make it more interesting, because that's, that's kind of bright sounding. Sounds more popish to me, actually. So let's try inverting it. Remember, we talked about inversion. So we're doing the first thing with the chords, we're with the with the chord theory for future bass. We're trying to get a minor chord on top. But this E minor seventh is, is a little bit bright. So what happens if I take this D and I put it in the middle of the chords? So we have E, G, and B on the bottom triad, and then for the top triad, we have D, which is the seventh, and then the E, and the G, and the B. So it'd be, so I really like that one. I like that too. So I will pull up the piano so you guys can see what I was doing or what I'm doing here. I actually like that a lot. So what I'm doing, this, let me change this real quick for you guys so you can see. Okay, so here is the, here's E minor, right? There's a big E minor stack. Now if I put the seventh right here on top, A little bit too bright sounding and weak. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the seventh and I'm putting it right there. It's still an E minor seventh chord. I actually really like that. And now the chord progression, if you remember, goes from the E minor down to the D. So I'm going to do a D6 over uh, add 11th chord. And all I'm doing is, if you look at this top triad, or not triad, this, uh, this top chord, we have the E minor with the seventh under it. And then what I'm going to do is, as I move down from E to the D on the bottom, I'm going to use good voice leading techniques. I'm going to go, I'm going to take my, my index finger on this E and take that up to an F sharp and make this kind of weird G major 7, but when you put the B and the A under, you get this D6 over 11, or D6 at 11. So let's play those two together back to back. That's a cool chord. C major 7 with a 9 on top. So there's the C and the G, the 5th. 
So there's a C add nine with a seven. So I really like those chords there. And then. So the last two chords, I don't really have anything, but I can always fill that in later. So I love writing on piano, especially for this type of track that kind of sounds like a piano style track. But let's load up Massive and let's try to find a synth sound that we could use. I'm going to turn Massive down a lot that we could use for these chords in the scratch track. All right, that one's a little bit too bright. So let me go through all these presets that I've made here. We're just going to go try to find one that works. pretty cool. Let's see what we got here. Okay. I don't like that one. Let's turn the cutoff up. Let's actually see if we can get an LFO going. Okay, I actually like that. I could roll with that. So we're gonna do the same chords here. We're gonna go. Just gonna keep it real simple. So I'm going to turn off the mic and record that real quick. All right, so I flubbed up the last couple notes or last section of the last chord or so, but let's uh, quantize this now. All right, so that sounds about right. Now let's get the note lengths all similar. So something I haven't talked about yet. With future bass, it's really common to do a couple things with your chords. And leaving the snare open, which when we get to the next video will make more sense, but not having a chord in the snare section. So the snare is probably gonna happen. So that one doesn't need to be there. So let's uh, get this one here. Let's leave this one open as well. So it go. Right, so then let's have this one extend out. And you don't have to do it the whole time, I might vary it a little bit. And another really common thing to do is stagger the notes and have a little bit of an offset so they're not all happening at the same point. There's a little bit more of that R&B feel. So then this one, let's get this nice and pacey. So if you guys are logic users, I'm holding down Alt or Option Shift as I edit these, these notes. So now they're all the same length and I'm holding down Option. And we're going to copy and paste these out. So it goes do, do, do. Let's get a little bit of space in between those notes there. And then we will copy and paste that out as well for do do do. And this one. 
this can be more of a normal length. So let's listen to this now in its entirety for the scratch track chords. All right, so that'll be good enough for us to build this scratch track around. And let's duplicate this track while we're on this section of the tutorial course. I wanted to talk about the type of synth sounds that you're going to need for uh, future bass type things. So all the synth sounds that I'll be using will be things that I have created. That's just typically how I like to work, the whole sound designer in me. And, um, well, not all of them, I should say. A lot of them, especially the synth sounds. So I'm pulling from Massive right now in a uh, sound set they made called Flume Future Bass Volume 1. And the sounds that you're going to be looking for are just big saws or square sounds that you can play chordically. So, for instance, here is a huge super saw sound, and we can play a couple of these here just to go through them and just... So there's really no right or wrong. You're just going to want to be able to either side chain it with something like the LFO tool or have it with have some movement dialed in in Massive or your synth with an LFO. Uh, so that's a really good one to... So the thing that you're going to notice about all these, they're all square and saw oriented. And they're not super deep in reverb. They're not super uh, just saturated in effects. And some of them have this shorter attack. They're not real, real plucky. Let's turn this down a little bit. So a lot of them are basically just wobbles, but with synths, and they're played polyphonically as opposed to uh, monophonically. All right, now here's something really cool. This is one of my favorite presets that I made. It's called Flujumed or Flumed, I guess. And do you hear how that LFO starts a little bit quicker at the beginning? It slows down. Right, a really easy way to set that up inside of Massive, and I'll touch on that real quick while, we've, while we're discussing some of these chords. And uh, we're gonna remake some sounds later in the tutorial course with this same idea, but just wanna touch on this now in case I forget. So you go to your LFO and you unsync the rate, right? And then with that, you pop in an envelope as a modulator with a shape that's conducive to either slowing down or speeding up. So if I turn this off and play the same chord, Right, it just moves at a steady rate. Now when I bring this envelope back in, and here's the envelope shape, modulating upwards with it, it's gonna speed up and slow down. And it's one of the coolest effects you can do for future bass inside of Massive. But there you guys go. That's just a really quick crash course on the type of sounds that you're going to want to look for. Really big uh, just chord sounds or synth sounds that you can use in future bass. Right? And there, there's really no wrong way to do it if you're trying to establish your own sound. You just want it to be not super lush because then it will try to fall. If it has too much reverb, it'll fall squarely into that progressive and even trance world. And you want some interesting element to it. Maybe get some foley or maybe do something cool. You know, so there they are. So what we're going to do now while we have Massive up is let's pull up a little bass patch for this. And I'm going to go to... Let's pull up like a deep hip hop pack that I know will work. So let's go and see if we can find uh, one that I want to use. Let's try this one. All right, now the reason I'm using this bass is that it's not necessarily a pure future bass bass, but I know that Luna is a hip hop R&B urban type artist. 
she leans more towards that side of the world than she does EDM and pop. So what we're going to do is try to balance this feature bass with a little bit of a hip-hop influence. And I know, for instance, uh, Chainsmokers did that with their track Roses. They have those A, A in there, you know, those like deep hip-hop haze. And it, and there is a certain element of hip-hop embedded into feature bass currently. So let's try that. Let's see how this sounds with the, uh, with the track. All right, so for this, what I'm going to do is just load up the LFO tool just to get some movement on it and sidechain compression style effects before we get to the drums here. We'll go sidechain. Let's do three here. Actually, three is the one I didn't want. All right, five is the one I want. And let's just record this in real quick. All right, so let's clean this up. I don't like how this is at all. So let's hi highlight all these and quantize. And let's get this thing. All right, so we want that to kind of uh, kind of go off the same pattern that we're going on for the chords. So doom, leave a little bit of space right there. So that's going to sum up this section of the tutorial. I'm going to color these right now. And let's actually color this one blue so it's not ugly. All right, so we got the synth and we got the bass. The next video, we're going to fill in some basic drums. Then we're going to export that track and send it out to the... Uh, to the singer, Luna Blake, and she will do her thing, and then I will be able to build up more of the track around it. I'll see you guys there. If you like this course, why not head over to sonicacademy.com where we have hundreds of complete track builds in every genre imaginable, including all the project files and samples. You'll also find tutorials on plugins and synths, mixing and mastering, over 250 tech tips, artist interviews, along with our award-winning plugins, samples, and preset packs.